So I am going to read from this, uh, and the main reason I'm going to warn you is because I'm really fearful I'm going to become emotional. So there's that. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't bring tissues in my check in my pockets. I did not. So bear with me, please. Um, the second reason is I do, I feel like this is an incredibly weighty task. Um, when I found out, oh, thank you, thank you, this will become necessary in a quick minute. Um, this is an incredibly weighty task for me when I found out that um, we had to share some sentiments and memories about Jane. Um, yeah, so I, I want to start by thanking Naswell. I want to thank the APIKC for um, allowing me personally, but also the hundreds of students that Jane influenced over the course of her career as senior students and VP of student life at Westmont College. We are recording this for Jane um, so that she can um, see this and hear it. So um, Jane for us was a mentor, she was a teacher, she was our confidant um, during her time. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so how do I describe Jane? Um, I, I did reach out to some of my friends from Westmont um, to prepare for this. Um, they do feel like I'm representing their voices and their experiences. Um, and the one common theme was how and where do we begin? Um, so many stories, so many examples of love, empathy, courage, strength, and wisdom. Um, and for Jane, you're going to see this. So these snapshots that I'm going to provide, this is from Alexis Ortiz, it is from Jane Messa, it is from Laura Wong, and it is from me, so all of us. Um, okay. Whew. So some context, I attended Westmont, a small, private, uh, faith-based PWI in Montecito, California um, from 2003 to 2004. Um, I knew Jane as a student um, and as a mentor and an informal advisor to the Asian American Student Association. It was shaking. Okay. Um, from 2003 to 2007, a handful of affinity organizations were either established or re-established by a few strong-willed mouthy and passionate students, um, people who I now consider some of my dearest friends. Um, so here are some of those snapshots that they provided. Um, first, Jane as a mentor. So I met Jane as a student in 2003. Um, as an East Coast transplant Korean American adoptee, I landed in Westmont with the wrong clothes, the wrong hobbies. I was a little bit awkward, a little bit angry. Um, and a whole lot of confused about what it meant to be Asian, uh, what it was to live in California, how to navigate college, all of that. Um, but Jane met me where I was. Um, I remember very little about that first month in college, but I remember lunch with Jane. Um, I remember that we had Caesar salads in downtown Santa Barbara, and I think Jane asked maybe like three questions, um, and then she just listened. She listened to my confusion about why I was there over in the West Coast in Santa Barbara, but why I really couldn't go home. Um, she listened to me talk through my limited understanding of what it meant to be Asian, um, to my profound confusion about the weather and why it was always sunny and 75 degrees. Um, towards the end of that meal, she said, this is good. We should do this more often. Also, you should connect with the Asian Student Association. What? I just went there for like an hour. Um, but we did. Um, and it was Jane's ability to hear, to make herself available, and to reframe what felt like chaos and confusion as good and normal that propelled me through my first semester. The second, Jane as family. Most of us consider Jane to be a mother, um, or a second mother. During our time at Westmont, it was common for students, API and others, to have dinner and to cook at Jane's, to store surfboards, or just, just stop by for visits. Um, one of my more powerful memories was sharing dinner with her father, who he calls Grandpa. Um, Grandpa was a Japanese-American World War II veteran who had endured the racism of the military and relocation camps. Um, over the course of a meal, we would exchange stories about his childhood and our coursework, um, the experience of living in the relocation camps, and the tedium of having to do laundry by ourselves. Um, but we listened to one another with equal amounts of intrigue and respect. As student leaders of cultural organizations on a PWI, we often sought out spaces that simply felt safe. Um, but through opening her house, her office, and her family to us, Jane gave us more than safety. Jane gave us family. Um, third, Jane as advocate. 
In 2004, one of our most cherished and respected advisors was passed over for 10 years. As an ally of one of the few faculty and staff of color, at the time, students felt betrayed. And in response, students organized a sit-in during finals week. While many administrators stopped by to persuade them to stop to end the protest, Jane did not. Instead, Jane came to the sit-in, and she sat quietly, just for a time, to let them know that they were heard, and that she cared. Regardless of the outcome and regardless of her position, this was Jane. She showed up. I am certain that in her, that during our time at Westmont, we caused her plenty of administrative headaches. I know this, but she was always there, letting us know that we were heard and that we were valued. Okay, seeing Jane is Jane. The last time I saw Jane was in Phoenix in 2012. It had been eight years. Um, at that point, yet she looked the exact same. Okay. Over a glass of wine, we talked about family, love, marriage, house, and work. We talked about how as Asian American women, we have the tendency to bury our emotions and stress deep down inside until it's just too much and we burst. She encouraged me not to do that. <laughs> we talked through an incident that happened my first year at Westmont and how she navigated it personally and professionally. We cried. I cherish this conversation in that moment. In eight years, Jane had lost a father. She lost grandpa. Um, she lost a partner. She lost a neighbor who she considered a son, and she lost a best friend. And I, at that moment, was searching for a job and probably more of myself than I realized at the time. And Jane, as she always has, showed me that you can move forward with strength and grace in the face of loss. That courage is beautiful and essential, but you have to earn it. She sat in front of me and I realized that it was she who first gave me permission to explore my identity as an Asian American woman with a simple, you should connect with the Asian American Student Association. That it is possible to be a strong woman leader and still cry with a former student in the middle of Phoenix surrounded by strangers. In our field, we often say that we stand on the shoulders of those who've gone before us. I'm not sure if Jane would be okay with me standing on her shoulders. Um, <laughs> But I feel fortunate to have held her hands, to have sat at her table, her living room, and her office. She has not only shattered the glass ceiling as a leader, but she has deeply and profoundly affected me, my practice, and my personhood, and I am one of many. So again, thank you to NASPA, thank you to the API KC, to, and of course, to Jane Eva. to be here to talk about her. And I want to share just a, a short note that she sent me about a month ago. Do you hear me? I'm sorry it's taken so long to respond. My being is quite shallow. In two weeks, it's really difficult. I was so surprised and so honored to be selected for this award. I've always admired Doris and was proud of our shared Hawaiian roots. I'm also humbled by the great company of recipients I will go. Please express my gratitude and the honor I feel of being selected. Because of my health, I will not be able to make my trip to Baltimore, but oh, do I wish I could. It would be so much fun to be all of you and to catch up with you. I've had a wonderful life with such a deep and fast time for you. I'm so very grateful. Love you, Captain Chang. When I think about my mentors in my life, I'm sure that I stand up. 
this award to Doris Chain. Doris has been uh, an example for all of us. But you didn't know Jane because she wasn't here that often. And as Jason really talked about, she's in the background. I wouldn't be here today and for the very specific reason why I say that. Because in 1989, Jane calls me and tells me, Henry, there's an organization you should be involved with. Because I think you care deeply about the future of the Americans. You should attend a Tahi. And I had never heard of a Tahi. And so when I came on, I attended Tahi for the first time. And at that apathy was significant. It was April 1989, and the keynote speaker was the just appointed Sunda Sparge, Chancellor Chang and Chiang Do you at least understand that was Henry G's awakening? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sixth American specifically higher education, because at that point in time, when I went to NASPA, I was typically the only one without GM, or maybe I saw like some now, but there were not that many of us. And there was change. And so that opened my eyes to see other Asians in the field who were committed. I am here today because of Jim Higa. I'm here today because of Doris Chain. And I believe all of us are in debt gratitude. I love you, Jane. Thank you. Actually, our first APIQC awards reception. And while there have been many firsts here this afternoon, there's first time awards, first time awardees, first time coaches, um, we must continue to give voice and to fight and pave the way for others. If you've been here for the past couple days, you've often heard the words lift as we climb. And we have a responsibility to ourselves, our families, and our communities, to our students, our peers, and to our future to keep moving forward. And while it's important to lift as we climb, it's imperative that we honor and respect those for whom have come before us, because their backs have been holding us up. Their legs have walked thousands of miles to move our community forward. And their arms have waved, have lifted, have pounded, and have carried us. Today and always, we pay our deepest respects to you. Your work carries us. And we commit to rising up those who will continue to inspire us. Our community is visible valuable, insightful, and powerful. Our people are important, determined, disruptors, and change agents. And together, we're not just a community of knowledge. We're a community of vision, and we're a community of hope. We're a community of wisdom, of action. We are friends, we are family, we are Barcala, we are Ohana, we are the NASPA APIKC. And we wish you all the safest travels. We hope to continue to see you around. Thank you so much. Thank you to our fearless leaders, Daniel, Greg, Choya, hashtag Choya. See you in New Orleans. Thank you.